Why in the world would a wedding photographer, which I consider combat photography, shoot film? Let's find out. Good? That was good. All right. Okay, let's go on here. <laughs> All right. You know, on February 13th, we're gonna have a free business coaching call. You call into this free call, I'm gonna teach you my daily routine for success. It's a great principle, it's a way to change your business life and change your perspective on how you work. So get over to thuslemonlens.com, sign up today, join us at 5 p.m., learn that daily routine for success. It'll really help you change your business. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And today on The Slant Lens, we're gonna take a look at film versus digital. Why do people shoot film? A lot of people I know do. A lot of wedding photographers. My wife, she's a wedding photographer. She shoots digital and film at the same time. So she's a hybrid shooter. She's hybrid shooting shooter. both. Yeah. That's yeah, the exactly. new term, hybrid people shooting. People love it. <laughs> so we're gonna set up and we're gonna shoot on these three cameras. We've got an old Hasselblad, which is a CM, mechanical camera, Nothing digital, nothing <laughs> electrical about this thing. Gonna shoot black and white on that Tri-X, right? Then we have, yeah, Tri-X black and white. And then we have this uh, Pentax 645N Mark II. This camera came out in about 2003. It was the last um, film body, the medium format film body that Pentax made. And it has all the bells and whistles autofocus. It does two or three shots per second with an auto winder. So a uh, far cry from the Hasselblad. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Nikon D850, which is probably one of the best uh, digital still cameras in the market today. So can we get the same look by shooting digital and then going in in some of the presets and post-processing if we can give you the same look in digital that you get shooting film? You will notice that there is a difference. Obviously this is full, for, uh, full frame and these are medium format and the reason we did that is because of all the people I know who are shooting film professionally, none of them not none, but most of them are not shooting full frame film. And so we, we could have done that, but I don't feel like it would have been as useful compared to a lot of people who are you shooting. Using a full frame they're digital. using a full frame digital and yeah. a medium format film. The medium format film is gonna give you a much cleaner look than the full frame film will. And um, honestly, I think that's one of the advantages that film still has is that you can shoot these really large formats. Even the medium format digital cameras are not as large as these are, so. Well, this is more of the kind of what you're going to get. If somebody's out doing a wedding, they're more likely to have a 35 millimeter digital and a two and a quarter for film. So we're going to look at dynamic range and then color portrait compared to digital and then Tri-X black and white compared to digital. Take a look at those three things. So let's get started and see what we can do. Yeah, yeah, take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> we got a frame, we got a frame. All right, here we go. So we're back here at the extremely scientific lab at the Slanted Lens, where we'll the analyze lab. the photo lab, where we'll <laughs> analyze and evaluate and come up with conclusions with regards to what we just did out in the field. Strong evidence-backed conclusions. Absolutely. Completely CSI objective. CSI kinds of stuff. <laughs> There's nothing subjective about this. Nothing. <laughs> All okay. right, so let's get into this. So <laughs> what we did, uh, we sent our film to Richard's Photo Lab, yep. which is a really, really great uh, developer and scanner in Santa Clarita. Yep. So all the color was was scanned on the frontier on a frontier scanner, and the black and white was on a Ritsu. Yep. And then I took the digital images from the Nikon and I ran them through uh, what's called a Visco film preset. So there's a company called Visco Film, and they do all these different presets that are basically stock emulations and you can choose, you know, you have Kodak Tri-X, you have Portra, you so have it'll choose Fuji Velvia, yeah. yeah. And they have any film you can imagine you can get from these guys, it's pretty awesome. Um, did it get it close when you did them? I, mean, I was, did you have to I was it, actually or? surprised, I've, I mean, I've been using Visco film presets for years, um, my wife uses them all the time for her photography, but I was actually surprised at how close it got. I, I figured, you know, it'll be kind of close. But it was, it was like 80, 90% there most of the time. So, but I did go into each individual photo and I, I did have to make extra adjustments to try and match it as close as possible. And uh, we'll talk more about that later. Let's jump in. Okay, so, so Kenneth asked me to, on my little sheet here, to write down which I thought was <laughs> which on each of these. Some of these were hard, man. All right, so for the first photo we have here, um, 
What was your guess and why? Film was on the right. It's okay. just a, the skin tone's a little bit ruddy. You see it especially in her arms and that. Mm -hmm. Just this kind of blotchiness in her skin. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that feels more like film to me. Okay. Um, Which image do you like more? Which one would you pick if it was going to go in your portfolio? That's interesting. Yeah, the one on the left feels so digitized to me. Just that perfect China doll face and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. In some ways, it feels like there's more detail in the film image. But pixel for pixel, I mean, the, the film image is less resolution, you know, so because the scanner is re less resolution than the 36 megapixel one from the Nikon. So it's, it's funny because it's like there is more detail, but in some ways there's less. It wasn't quite as sharp as the Nikon. It, yeah. Oh. I don't think film renders skin as pretty as digital does. Mm, interesting. I think the digital is a lot creamier looking, but that's also the preset you're putting on it as well. Right. As, the pre, yeah. You know. I will say, just to keep this in mind moving forward, one of the biggest challenges I had with matching the digital is that it was the skin tone. Because what happened with the digital, so the Kodak has this really great way of separating the skin from every el everything else in the image. So the skin actually has a sort of magenta look to it, mm -hmm. but the greens in the background are still very green. But when I would try to adjust the, the Nikon, if I tried to pull more of the magenta out of the skin, everything else in the image would go magenta. Oh. I would have had to go in and like brush her skin yeah, to, to kind her. of match the magenta. Interesting. So I had to make a choice between matching the overall color or matching her skin. Yeah. We also look at it, you just look at the openness of her eyes. Right. So you see a con there's definitely not near the dynamic range in the uh, film that you're getting in the digital, at least when you digitize the digital. Yeah. This one is a great example of that. I mean, we were kind of, you get kind of locked in when you scan the film in this way. Like I, straight out of the box, the digital has less, um, well, sh it, pull the, down on the shadows. The yeah. charm of the film, if you would have to say, is the fact that it isn't so perfect. Right. You well, know, yeah, I say that all the time. Yeah, I love shooting do. film because I don't worry about it. But <laughs> ironically, <laughs> ironically, I just say, it's not going to be perfect. It, it looks bad. Doesn't that look great? <laughs> I think you can tell, especially in this one, because the, the highlights, the blown out highlights, go a little magenta. All right, this one. I said right on this one. It's the left. Is it? Actually. Doesn't seem consistent with what I saw in the <laughs> other ones. But yeah, the, the film's more open and less contrasty. Mm -hmm. and really... I think, again, you can tell it's like it has more shadow in the legs on the yes. digital. You look at the, the highlights, and there's way more detail in her dress. Yeah. Uh, this was the hardest one of the whole test. Uh, I put right. You're right. It, it was a bit of Good a job. guess. Yeah. It was as much a guess as you think. If you look at her forearm and her shoulder, you see that more just of the feels like film. And also, this is an instance where you can tell that the Nikon has more pixels. Because you look at her eyelashes and there's much more detail More detail, yeah. yeah. And also the lens just doesn't flare nearly as well as the Nikon no. lens does. <laughs> now the black and white. I Sorry, love the, the look of the black and white, actually. Yeah. I yeah. feel like the film is just a little more open. On this, put on this one? I put the left, that's definitely wrong. Look at the depth of field. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, you're, that's left. wrong. I can almost feel the grain. Look at look right there on those two at her uh, you're neck. Right. Look you're at the, right. the grain structure yeah, of the one right. on the left. That just feels like especially Tri-X. Which surprised Tri -X me. Is a little well, bit yeah, Tri-X is kind of gritty. I'm the one that cut these and I can't even <laughs> <laughs> You can just feel it, the grain pattern. Look at the grain right there. That yeah. that I've seen that so many times that is just it's funny tri -X. I, you know? I actually prefer cuz this one turned out a little bit the it's a little bit faded almost. And I I purposefully had to fade the digital so I might have overdone it. There's the that left kind is of much better, kind yeah. of milky yeah. uh, blacks when you yeah. get it when you don't have mu much when, light. Her her complexion is much harsher in that image in the top. You see uh -huh. the imperfections There's much more. There's more detail in it. There's more detail, which in it. is surprising. It's that weird thing where sometimes the film has more, sometimes it has less. Yeah, I mean, you look at that, and you were only wrong, like maybe two or three times, out of what. 20 images, 24 images? 24 images, yeah. Something like that. Because <laughs> that was a question, is like, does film have a look worth, you know, oh, I'm shooting film because it has that look, I can't get with digital. It kind of does, because you can tell which one it is. Yeah, a guy who shot hundreds and hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of rolls of film That's can true. tell the difference. That's true. I think if you're going to shoot film professionally, it's more about your workflow 
and what you enjoy yeah. and what makes you happy than it is about image quality. Uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, what makes you happy. Yeah. What makes it interesting and exciting to you. And it, if, if, if it's a hook that gets your, your gets clientele your clients, going, yeah. hey, we love that. You know, I mean, if it's a hook that works, you know, absolutely. I will say, if you're a beginning photographer, rather than going and spending $1,000 on an ADD or a D5300 or something, I actually recommend going on eBay and buying some Canon AE-1 or something like that for 150 bucks and buy 20 rolls of film. And I think you'll learn the basics of photography way faster than you will with your digital camera. I think that's even cheating. <laughs> Buy a Hasselblad that has no internal metering in it, okay. so you have to learn to see exposure. Yeah. You'd be surprised how much that'll teach you, actually. Yeah. All right, so... All right, dynamic range. Dynamic range. This one, I just... I, I love doing dynamic range. I'm pretty good at... Well, this one is a really interesting one to me, because I kind of know the outcome of this one. All right, so I'm going to say, first of all, I discovered that I did not take a properly exposed image on the Pentax. No? Somehow it just didn't happen. Okay. The digital is untouched. This is just straight raw. I didn't do any any presets just, just, the way just it was. to see how it is. We um, picked a nice setting for this. Yeah, I this think. is great. You just, have it feels like a you have like the white dress and the, yeah, the you got white, the white and the seven shadows, left, you got the dark yeah. black in the background. Yeah, so it'll, for dynamic range test it looks good. Right. Plus one stops, they're all looking pretty good. And plus two stops, still don't see a difference. The Nikon's holding up totally fine. At plus three stops, the Nikon just like abruptly falls apart. It does, falls right it off a cliff. Actually really surprised me, because I thought it would go, with, I thought it would handle plus three. Plus four maybe not, but I thought it'd be okay with plus three. The the film photos look normal, they actually look exactly the same <laughs> as the other look, ones. They don't look different at all. <laughs> Just crazy how, how much you can overexpose it. When we say film, we're talking about print film, not right, transparency not film. You cannot do this don't with transparency. Don't try this at home with transparency. No, transparency <laughs> film, this, you won't get the same result. This is four stops over. Wow, look at the Nikon. <laughs> the like, Nikon's just gone. That's a digital process, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's a different, different yeah, sense different, of science. But the, the color in the black and white don't look that much. You're starting to lose a little bit, but it's not terrible. So what I found is you look really close at these. It's hard because I have them stacked next to each, but you look really close at these and the the detail in the rock is the same across all the images. The details in her dress the same across. What you do start to see though is the color and the overall tonality start to wash out a tiny bit. Which almost looks interesting. In it almost opens way. up the shadows mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, go to five stops. Obviously Nikon's gone. The film, I wish we'd gone to six stops because I almost feel like maybe six stops would have been the limit. I don't no, know. I wish we had gone to six. I wish we had gone. I didn't expect film to make it to five stops, so mm -hmm. we stopped there. So five stops <laughs> over, I mean, the, they're still photos I would deliver to the client. I would have no problem with it. Oh, yeah. It's just amazing. Usually the problem, though, is that with film, especially if you're doing anything inside, you don't have enough light. You're, you're right. not going to get a stop over. So, so let's go to underexposing. Now, minus one stop. It seems fine. I mean, the, they look great all across the board. Minus two stops, I already see it with the film. There isn't as much detail in the background. No, you're starting to really all. block up the blacks. The, the Nikon looks just the same. You go to minus three stops, and now it's like a problem. Yeah. This is where I would say, okay, shoot, what do I do now? The Triax just gets like dark. Yeah, it's just black. It actually kind of looks like the portrait has been sent through a airport X-ray. <laughs> and then uh, minus four stops, it's it's kind of There's just gone. nothing there yeah. anymore. I wonder if if they'd scan this to a TIFF. I wonder if I could have massaged a little bit out, but it's it's not really. Look at the digital. We're at minus four stops. As bad as the Nikon look going in at plus, the, right. it holds up it going under. It holds up. This would still work for oh. you know like a maybe a six by eight. Yeah. photo print or something. I wouldn't blow this image up, but still, minus four stops, that's pretty incredible. That's a lot. So, yeah. yeah, if you're shooting digital, if you're a hybrid shooter, you shoot film outside, you shoot digital inside. Absolutely, that, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Because yeah. that film, especially if you're shooting like on a beach or something, and, and I will say, even on set, I was shooting the film and I wasn't worried about the exposure as much. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I think that's right, got it, you know. With the Nikon, I was freaking out because I look at the screen on the back and it was, you know, too bright or whatever, and I was really, I was really worried about the tolerance with the highlights. So, film can give you some peace of mind with that. Yep. But in terms of the shadows, the... I mean, when the dynamic range is on the bottom like that, it, it makes it so you can shoot everywhere. With it, film, it's, it's on the true, top, it's it makes true. it so you can't shoot Basically, what you're saying is the signal-to-noise ratio is lower with the digital. So, 
What do you think? I, you gonna be shooting film from now on? <laughs> you know, oddly <laughs> enough, I am going to start to shoot some film. But here's my summation of it: is I think that the look you can replicate the look enough in digital that I don't think your bride enough that it doesn't make sense. Is, the bride's not gonna be able to tell the difference, mm -hmm. and the cost. I mean, you're spending. Yeah. We spent one hundred and fifty dollars. On, on six rolls, six rolls yeah. of film. Yeah, that's true. That was just to process it. We had to buy the six rolls of film too, which was another, another $30. forty or for, thirty yeah. or forty dollars. You know, so we're getting close to two hundred dollars to do six rolls of film. If you're charging two thousand dollars for a wedding, that's a ten percent investment. Yeah, that's hard. You know, that's hard. Most hybrid shooters I know though are charging four to five thousand for a wedding. Which makes sense. If you're in that category, it's a it's a cool thing. You've got this camera you pull out, do some right. shots, yeah. you know. I mean, it becomes part of the show as much as anything. So the cost is an issue. I do think the film has a really cool look. I, I don't and I didn't think I would say that, but in looking at it I really do. And I love the look. I kind of I mean it just feels familiar, feels right to me. So I can see why people are doing it. Yeah. I really can. I agree. I think um, in terms of flexibility, obviously digital has the advantage. In terms of image, it depends on what you're shooting, honestly. I think film does have the advantage in some ways, but in most scenarios, digital probably still has the advantage. So it really, like we said before, it comes down to workflow and what you like, what makes you happy. So there you have it. We're going to upload all these images to our uh, website, thesunlens.com slash film comparison. Go there, download them. We're gonna have the raw Nikon images. We're gonna have the, the ones that Kenneth corrected, mm -hmm. and then the film images. Take that raw image, go into other softwares, correct them, do, try to get it as close to film as possible in other softwares, and post those to our Facebook group. We want to see what other softwares are doing, how they compare, let our community kind of look and see if there's other software out there that's even better. We'll give $50 uh, worth of film to uh, the one that we think comes up with the best conversion. So get over to thesledlens.com slash film comparison and download those images and see what you can do. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. It's February. We're giving away four of these Platypod Maxes. This is a plate that allows you to put your camera in very difficult places. It's a small, simple plate, but it gives you hundreds of opportunities to put your camera in places that normally you can't get it into. So get over to thesledlens.com where you can possibly win one. Sign up. You might win one. All right, so it's probably been 11 years since I've loaded one of these. But I used to load these things. You get so you're so fast at it, you know, you just load them like crazy. But it's been a long time. It's been about 24 hours. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't shoot film that often. <laughs> so here we go.